Some of the common changes that we can see in EKGs will indicate what type of a myocardial infarction that we are undergoing. If we see ST elevations, that is also known as a STEMI, that is a transmural infarct, meaning that it goes through the entire wall of the myocardium. If we see ST depression, that is typically associated with an NSTEMI, or non-ST elevated myocardial infarction, and that is a subendothelial infarction. It does not completely traverse the full width of the myocardium, which we will discuss later. We can also see T waves that are peaked with a EKG and a myocardial infarction, and other indicators of a myocardial infarction on EKG include a new left bundle branch block, which if you remember, that is bunny ears. Pathologic Q waves or a poor R wave progression. As you see in this chart, various leads on an EKG will tell us where the infarction may possibly be. So the brown located in one AVL, as well as V5 and V6, show a lateral or an anterolateral MI that is typically associated with a left anterior descending or a left circumflex artery occlusion. Leads 2, 3, and AVF are indicative of a inferior wall myocardial infarction, and that would be a blockage of the right coronary artery. Leads V1 and V2 are will be indicative of a septal or an anteroseptal myocardial infarction, and that is typically caused by the left anterior descending artery, also known as the Widowmaker. And finally, changes in V3 and V4 are indicative of an anterior wall MI that is typically associated with the distal portions of the left anterior descending artery. As you see in this example, we do have ST elevations in 2, 3, and AVF, which going back to our previous chart shows that we are dealing with an inferior wall myocardial infarction.